What's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach here, and this is the Electricians in Action. Let's go ahead and fight the good fight. So we're continuing in our video series on 300.5. We're talking about conduit. We're talking about subject physical damage. We're talking about all these things, and I cannot wait today to get into this lesson. Today we're going to be in 300.5D. So we're going to be dealing with 300.5D, and there's four points that we got to cover here today. So what 300.5D says, it says direct burial conductors and cables shall be protected from physical damage. Okay, in parts one through four, or let me see how it says it here. In accordance with parts one through four. So, okay, so that's why you always got to be careful when you look in the code. Does it say one of these parts in one through four, or does it say all of these parts in one through four? Here it says in accordance with D1 through D4. So in my interpretation, that means we've got to hit all four points. Let's go ahead and talk about them now. All right, so the first point here is when we're emerging from grade. So if you're new in the game, you're just getting started, and you're wondering what that means, let's go ahead and explain what that means first. So let's say we have an underground uh, wire run, and we are using a cable that does not require conduit in the ground, like triplex or quad. As we're coming up, heading up to the panel above ground, okay, as we emerge up, the flat part of the earth where the ground is is called grade, okay, wherever that's at, or where it's going to be when you're finished is called grade. So you have uh, wire underground, you're getting ready to come up. As you breach the earth right there, that's going to be grade. And, you know, what are we going to do with these cables that are not in a conduit? They're okay not to be in a conduit down underneath the, underneath the earth. But what are we going to do with these cables as they emerge from grade? As they're coming out of their trench, we learned yesterday how to size the conductors. Excuse me, the burial depth. We've learned the last couple days how to decide our burial depth and different things like that. Today, once we're coming out of that burial depth, how do we physically protect those underground feeder, uh, you know, service and feeder cables, how do we protect them as they come out of the ground, okay? And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about here today. I'm super excited about it. So, point one says, as we're emerging from grade, we must physically protect those conductors with a sleeve of conduit or another means. You can build an enclosure. If you built a wooden enclosure, you may, uh, your inspector may let that pass. You may also be able to buy a box or a pre-built enclosure to put it in, okay? So as these conductors come out from underneath ground, typically we'll use a conduit sleeve, won't we? But the question is, is how far does that conduit sleeve have to extend down? Okay, and that's what we're going to cover in this code right here. So what this code states, we're in 300.5 D1, and what this code states is as I come up out of the ground, I must physically protect that conduit all the way up to 8 feet. When you get above 8 feet, then you can, you know, if it's a conductor that can be run outside of the conduit, you could legally do it. A good example would be um, your generator cable. That pre-built generator cable that's rated for direct burial, if you did it straight down in a trench, it's legal without conduit, then you would have to sleeve it all the way up to 8 feet or until you get inside your panel, right? So let's say you came underground, you're doing an outside meter center, underground, you sleeve this conduit and you come in the bottom of the meter center, well, then you don't have to protect it anymore because it's protected inside of there. So let's imagine you come underground, you come in the bottom of this and you come up. Well, how far down in the ground do you have to protect? So we're building a sleeve, right? We've got our um, direct burial cables just laying down in the ground. We take a PVC sleeve, we'll say. Let's say it's not in an area that's subject to physical damage, which we're getting ready to talk about here in a minute in part um, four, I think. But let's say you're coming up from the ground. You've got this meter uh, disconnect combo outside. You need to protect that wire going up into the bottom of the panel. Well, what the code states here is that you're required to have that sleeve go down in the ground, so we're beneath grade now. That sleeve is required to go down in the ground as far as you were required to bury it. Does that make sense? So if your um, situation that you were in, based off of table 300.5, required you to be 18 inches deep, then your sleeve, when you're emerging from grade, is required to be 18 inches deep, okay? So you basically have to physically protect it all the way down to as deep as your trench needed to be according to table 300.5. So if according to table 300.5, like we've learned the last few days, if, if it was required to be 24 inches deep, then that's saying 
that you know your your pipe would need to be 24 inches deep. But there's a second part to this code here. So when you look at the emerging from grade code part D1, it says that you are required to use table 300.5 to decide how far down you have to go. So if it was 12 inches, you gotta go 12 inches and have your uh, sleeve be that long. If it was 18 inches, you gotta go 18 inches. But at the bottom of that paragraph, it lets us know that it's never re required to be deeper than 18 inches, okay? So regardless of what table 300.5 says, that sleeve as it goes underneath grade is not required to be more than 18 inches deep, okay? so. I say rule of thumb, guys, okay, and you're, you may get tested on this, so if you are tested, it's not required to be more than 18 inches deep, but as far as the field goes, why don't we just go ahead and make every sleeve, as we're emerging from grade, let's make them all 18 inches long, okay? Now, if your ditch only required, like we learned about yesterday, if your ditch only required you to be 12 inches, just make it 12 inches, but pretty much every time we're doing underground services or feeders, it's going to be at least 18 24, you might live in one of those crazy areas that does 36 inches. So let's just make it when we're doing with 300.5 D1, okay? <coughs> and we have <coughs> and we have conductors and cables down in the ground coming out. We're emerging from grade. We're wanting to sleeve those puppies. What we're going to do is we're going to make it, make it extend at least 18 inches down in the ground, okay? And if you look through that code there, you'll understand. You either have to use table 300.5, but you're not required to make it deeper than 18 inches. All right, let's go ahead and move on with this. Uh, D2, so we're in 300.5 D2, it says conductors entering a building, okay? So this is whether you're underneath a slab or outside. Let's say same scenario, but let's say we're not coming into a meter center. And for whatever reason, let's say it was a feeder and there's already a disconnect over there. So we went underground, we came back out from underground, and we must physically protect those conductors. Remember, all of that we're dealing with today is direct burial conductors. Okay, everything we're talking about today is all for direct burial. So we came out, we had a feeder uh you know, we had a meter disconnect combo over here on a post. Let's say it's a mobile home. We had a feeder disconnect combo on a post over here. We wanted to go back underground with our run. We went back underground with our run. As we're emerging with grade with our um, direct burial conductors, we're required to sleeve that up into eight feet. But the code says here that we're also required to sleeve it all the way until we enter the building. So with that being said, uh, you know, those two codes kind of contradict each other because the first one says it's required to be protected only to eight feet, but the second one says that it's required to be protected all the way until it enters the building. So that's something you'll have to work out with your AHJ, but you must physically protect it up to eight feet, okay, subject to physical damage, but then that code states that they must be protected all the way until they enter the building. And let's see if it says anything in here. It just says conductors ending the building must be protected until their point of entrance. Um, so you can work that out with your AHJ. So you must protect it until you get to the bottom of the building. And then most conductors, if it's like a single strand conductor, they're going to be required to be in some type of conduit all the way until they you know, get inside of the panel. But a good example where it would not be required to do it is if you were doing UF cable. Okay, so we've dropped our underground feeder cable down in the ground. Let's say we've ran a 12, uh, you know, 12 gauge circuit. We've dropped it down in the ground. We come up over here at the building. We do a PVC sleeve as we emerge from grade. Well, as soon as I get in that stud wall, that UF is allowed to be run right in the stud wall, isn't it? So I could technically trans transition over and get outside of that conduit. So that's a really good example right there. Let's go ahead and look at part three here. This is a really important one, guys. I want you guys to really pay attention to this. So we're dealing with service conductors. We're in 300.5 D3. Now remember, service conductors are any conductors on the line side of that meter, okay? Or on the line side of a commercial situation. What this is saying here for service conductors that are underground, when you're doing underground service conductors, you are required, excuse me, underground service conductors that are not encased in concrete that are, excuse me, <clears throat> let's just go ahead and read it straight from the book. Where underground service conductors that are not encased in concrete that are buried 
18 inches or more below grade shall have their location identified by a warning ribbon that is placed in the trench at least 12 inches above the underground installation. Now, everything we're talking about here is for direct buried cables, okay? In our area, and, and a lot of inspectors may interpret it this way, when you're dealing with service conductors, even if it's in conduit, they'll make you do this code. But first, let me explain what this code is. If you're doing underground direct burial cable that's at least 18 inches you know, below grade, most of them it's always going to be once you read table 300.5, okay? One foot above those cables. Remember, these are just open cables. They're not in conduit at all. If somebody's in there digging, there's no conduit to hit first to say, oh my goodness, what's going on here? So these direct burial cables, and they're going to be unfused, okay, um, on, the, on the load side. So I've got service cables. Let's say we came straight from a pole, dropped underground. We sleeved it right here. We went to direct burial cables over here to a building, and then we popped up. Well, those cables are just laying in the ground without conduit at all, which is totally code compliant, and I'm all about using underground service cables. Well, there's no fuse on that, and there's no conduit to protect it. So what the code makes you do is, let's say you dug the trench, you laid your cable down in the trench. What you're supposed to do is, is cover it up with a foot of dirt and then run a identifying ribbon. Typically, it is a red um, caution tape that says warning electrical all over it. Okay, so you dig your underground trench, you put your underground service feeder cables. Remember, never repeating anything in these videos, just using for educational purposes only. Then you put your red caution tape. Okay, so you, first off, you do your underground cables, you, you, you dig your trench, put your underground cables in, then you cover it up with one foot of dirt, and then you put a red caution tape down in the ditch, in the mud, and then you cover it up the rest of the way with dirt. And what this does is, is if somebody's ever digging, they're going to come across that red tape and stop. They're going to say, oh my goodness, there's underground cable in, the, in here, okay? With that being said, in our area, we even do it when there's conduit involved, okay? And there may be another place in the code. I've always used that code to justify it, but there may be another place in the code that requires it even conduit. I'll look that up this evening. But listen to me just for a second. We even do it on feeders in our area, I don't care if I do have a main breaker over here. If I go underground, I still put that red caution tape. First off, if they're my customer, I don't want somebody digging it up and me looking like an idiot. Okay. For two, if I could put a red piece of caution tape on an underground line, why in the world would I not do it? Why in the world would I not let somebody know there's 200 amp? Now, if I was doing a piece of UF cable and it was no big deal, then I probably would not do it. But if I'm doing a whole service cable, first off, I don't want it dug up and me looking like an idiot. Perry, why did our digger hit this? Why did you not let us, you know what I mean? Of course, they, they should know where their stuff is, especially if it's newer and it's the same customer. But listen, even if it's a feeder, we still do it in our area. Most guys do in our area, and a lot of the inspectors still want it. So even if I've got a main breaker over here, when I drop back underground, and we do this even when there's conduit involved, we just go ahead and put the red tape. So that's one I'm pretty passionate about. Just go ahead and put the red tape. Hold on, Bella. She's excited about life over there. I wish you guys could get to meet my dog. I think you guys might have met her in one of my videos. But let's go ahead and look at part four here, and we'll call it a day. So we're in 300.5 D4, okay? And it says where the conductors or enclosures are subject to physical damage, conductors shall be protected by rigid metal conduit, intermediate metal conduit, EMT, um, another type of conduit there, or Schedule 80. Now, this is the big what if of electrical when is it subject to physical damage now there are clearly times that we know something's subject to physical damage and sometimes the code says the word severe physical damage but let's talk about this for a second so if we had a carport on the side of a house and the meter came in underground okay so here's the ranch a ranch style house here's the carport let me look at you guys here i guess Here's the house. The house goes this way. We're pulling up to the carport. Underneath the concrete comes the meter, the, excuse me, the underground service, and then the meter's right there. And the car pulls in like this. Now, would we all agree that this pipe and this service is subject to physical damage? Yes. Now, that's a pretty cut and dry one. Well, what about if we put that same meter on the back side in this man's yard? Okay in the grass. 
Carport's here. Car pulls up. It's back here on the back side of the house in the grass. Is that subject to physical damage? Well, I don't know. Could a mower hit it? Maybe. I don't get too crazy with the subject of physical damage stuff, but that is totally up to your electrical inspector. So if it is deemed subject to physical damage, it must be protected by EMT, um, I, IRC, intermediate metal, or IMC, intermediate metal conduit, RMC, rigid metal conduit, or schedule AD PVC, or one of the other approved methods there. So this is just one. I'm super excited about this video. I hope you guys have a great day. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Let's get out here and fight the good fight today. If there's anything you ever need from me, you can email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.